All right, we keep going on warehouse management. This time around, I'm just gonna take a step back and look at the bin contents. Uh, so bin contents is like an overview screen that gives you a line for everything, for all the fixed bins that are in there and also the floating bins that have something in there. And it separates out by the bin. So we'll have here the bin. Uh, and so let's just do it like this. We have the bin, we have the item. We have the item unit of measure, which means it's the unit of measure that's in that bin. So you could have two lines for the same item in the same bin, but two different item unit of measures, which means in the same bin, you could have boxes and pieces or different bins. Um, but then you have something called quantity and quantity base. And the quantity is what, how much you have of that unit of measure in that bin. Quantity base is how much you have of the base unit of measure. So let's say if you have boxes in there, each box has 20. So you have five boxes, then you're gonna have a um, hundred pieces in there. So this would be 20 and this would be a hundred. And this, let's say this would be a box and this would be the coffee mug. But basically, um, I'm not going to emphasize that in this. I'm more going to talk about quantity uh, available to pick, AP. So in this case, if nothing has been taken out, the quantity available to pick is 100. Now, quantity available to pick is whatever you have in the bin as long as there is no outstanding activity for that bin to be picked away. So if there's already a pick out there for 100, quantity available to pick would be zero because it's sitting out there waiting to be picked. So you cannot take more than it's executed. So it's almost like the supply demand that you have on sales orders, purchase orders, inventory. You have that with the bins. Um, so let's take a quick look at that in system uh, before we get further into that topic. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the bin content screen a little bit. We're going to bin contents. Um, it has a lot of good information. Uh, one of the things that I'm going to focus on right now is, is this uh, available to take right here. So we have the quantity and we have the unit of measure. So we have what unit of measure is there. It's all in pieces. And we have how much quantity we have in here, both in the unit of measure and also in the base, which means in like the base unit of measure for that item. In this case, we, we're dealing in the same. So the available take here is 260, which is the same. So what I'm going to do now is sort of um, create a uh, movement. So I'll go into a movement worksheet and I'm going to prepare to move 150 to the shipping zone. So I'm going to take the Inecta coffee mug from storage from um, from uh, to uh, and to the shipping zone to the shipping bin and I'm going to take 150. Now here I'll go ahead and just say create the movement and hit OK. So the movement activity has been created. Now nothing has been moved yet. So if I just go ahead and, uh, and refresh this uh, and go back into my bin content screen, I can see that for the uh, storage, um, storage 2, now I have pick quantity 150. It means that this is actually going out. So my available to take is 110, even though it hasn't been taken out yet. So the system is keeping track of the activities that are out there to take out of the bin. So it's reducing that. Um, and, and so keeping track of basically you're not going negative. And it might not be in anything available to take in that bin, even though the pick has not been executed. And this is an important fact of once we start issuing many orders to pick out of the bins, you know, fast and, and uh, 
and wave picking and other picking strategies. So I just wanted to highlight that. Now, a cool thing also, I can click on here and see what is what is scheduled to be taken out. And this is a movement. So I can see the warehouse document here. And that's going to be the, uh, the movement from uh, storage to shipping. It's, it's very, very sophisticated.